Hello and welcome to this presentation about spatial configuration analysis based discrete route choice modeling for micromobility. My name is Hans Henry Schumann and I'm a doctoral researcher at Loughborough University. In today's presentation, I will talk about the background motivation of the ongoing research, its methodology and preliminary results, and I will present conclusions and future work. The last years have seen an increased deployment of micromobility services worldwide. For the purpose of this presentation, the term micromobility refers to novel modes such as e-scooters, monowheels and hoverboards, but also comprises more traditional modes such as skateboards and of course bicycles. The increasing and increased popularity of micromobility services is exemplified by the following three points. First, the number of bike sharing services grew from around about 10 in the 1990s to more than 2,900 worldwide in 2019. Second, the two companies Lime and Bird offer e-scooter sharing systems in more than 100 cities worldwide and this only a few years after the beginning of their services. And third, the United Kingdom government has started e-scooter trials in several dozen cities across the country to evaluate the impact of the usage of electric scooters. The increased popularity of micromobility comes with both chances and challenges. Micromobility, regardless of whether we speak about e-scooters or bicycles, has always been seen as a is serving the purpose of greener mobility, for example by replacing car trips or by solving the last mile problem of public transport, which then in the end would lead to less air pollution and by less uh, to less space which is needed for roads. On the other side, of course, we have to talk about adapting regulations, um, providing appropriate infrastructure to create high levels of safety, um, and to adapt uh, the design of our transport system and to create um, an equitable and inclusive environment. For an informed decision making, it is vital to understand how people use micromobility. One way to create this understanding is through the use of modeling and simulation tools. One part of the modeling and simulation process is route choice. Due to many reasons, we have a lack of understanding of how micromobility users choose their routes. One of the reasons is a lack of, lack of data. However, with the novel shared micromobility solutions, we have a unique data source which provides us exactly with the data we need, namely tracking data of micromobility vehicles. As some or many local authorities struggle to collect sufficient data regarding the infrastructure which can be used by micromobility. Our research aims at developing a micromobility route choice model with data which is comparatively easy, easily available. This route choice model shall then be used for planning purposes namely to make sure that infrastructure is built there where it is needed and used for maintenance purposes, for example by prioritizing maintenance works, and of course also for operation purposes. For example, by making sure that electric vehicles are always equipped with a sufficiently charged battery. For developing the route choice model, we use the theoretical framework of discrete choice modeling. Parameters derived from spatial configuration analysis serve as input attributes. And tracking data from micromobility services are used for calibration and verification purposes. In the previous slide, I mentioned the term spatial configuration, which I want to explain a bit further here. Spatial configuration is understood as the void between walls and other kinds of physical barriers that prevent traffic or visual fields. And core for analyzing spatial configuration is the so-called axial map. The following figures exemplify what this means in practice. Figure 1 depicts the figure ground diagram of a French village which has been used by Hilly and Hansen as a case study in their groundbreaking book The Sociologic of Space. 
In figure 2, you see how axial lines are created by passing through all the unbuilt spaces which are black in figure 1. A set of axial lines forms the so-called axial map, which you can see in figure 3. And this axial map can be analyzed using graph theory methods, as shown in figure 4. Here you have to consider that each axis of the axial map is a node and each intersection between axes uh, is an edge within the graph. And the whole purpose of this analysis is to analyze the relationship between space and society. And in fact, various research, research has been conducted which shows a, uh, a relationship between spatial configuration and crime levels, spatial configuration and income levels, etc. etc. And for our part today, most importantly, also a relationship between spatial configuration and traffic has been shown. Namely for pedestrians, which has then been called the so-called theory of natural movement, but also the relationship between spatial configuration of bike traffic and car traffic has been shown. Here one has to consider that the relationship between special configuration and traffic is generally speaking smaller for motorized vehicles and bigger for non-motorized vehicles such as bicycles and pedestrians. What we aim for in our research project is to estimate the discrete route choice model for micromobility here at the very bottom of the slide. For this, we use, as already mentioned, two types of input data. At the very top right, the network data, which is then um, passed through a special configuration analysis, which creates an axial map, and the tracking data, which after being map matched on the axial map, is used uh, for calibration and verification of the model. For the purpose of uh, testing, our model and making sure that the program runs smoothly, we have developed what we call a toy model. So this toy model does not use real-world infrastructure data, nor does it use real-world tracking data. Instead, it uses a synthetic network, which is represented on the right side of the slide. This synthetic network consists of 10 intersections here in the graphic uh, represented by um, circles and links connecting those intersections and thereby representing uh, the infrastructure that could possibly be used by uh, micromobility users. In this toy model so far we are working with exactly one origin destination pair and the origin is at the very bottom and the destination at the very top of this um, graphic which you can see here on the right. Every route choice model also needs uh, the application of a route choice set generation algorithm. Why is that? Um, well for the for making a decision between different alternatives you need to have a set of alternatives. This is where the route choice set generation algorithm comes into place. It collects a number or a set of alternatives out of a basically an uh, infinite number of alternatives when you think of a real world network. Um, existing route choice set generation algorithms have some strengths and some weaknesses. A general weakness of existing route choice set generation algorithms is that they have a quite low coverage of um, the actually chosen routes. So this means that many of the existing route choice set generation algorithms do not reproduce the routes that we can see in reality. To address this issue, to have a, um, to have a more realistic, to create a more realistic uh, route choice set, we developed a new uh, route choice set generation algorithm, which is explained on the next slide. The route choice set generation algorithm consists of four steps. In the first step, weights must be assigned to each segment in the network. This could mean, for example, that one weight, 
depends on the length per segment, and the other weight depends on its gradient. In the second step, labeled paths must be found based on the weights assigned in the first step. Here in this example, this means that the red path that you can see in the picture is the shortest path to get from the origin to the, de to the destination. And the orange path is the path with the least change in gradient or the flattest path. In the third step, a search area is defined based on the labeled path found in step number two. The search area here is exemplified by this reddish color in the background. And in the, in the fourth and final step, all the simple paths within the search area are found. A simple path is a path that does not visit um, a node twice. Unfortunately, so far we have not been able to implement this raw choice set generation algorithm um, on the real world network and using real world tracking data for verification. But due to its construction, you can already say that it outperforms existing raw choice set generation algorithms such as the labeling approach by design. Testing and validating our work against real world data is of course the priority for the near future. This is why we are going to implement both our road choice set generation algorithm and the route choice model itself for the city of Mannheim in Germany, for which we have obtained eScooter tracking data. This will allow us to, to compare our route choice set generation algorithm with other route choice set generation algorithms based on their performance regarding the coverage of actually chosen routes and computation time based on real-world data. Also, it will allow us to verify the applicability of special configuration analysis for route choice modeling for micromobility. Eventually, our route choice model can be used by both authorities and um, private corporations to inform their decision making. This will help to create greener, more sustainable and more equitable transport systems. Thank you very much for your attention.